Hello and welcome to the Southern Cuga Show. Today we have some national news and local news, sports, and a really big prime number. Hope you enjoy. Hello, this is Logan and Jordan reporting on national news. We will be reporting on the recent false missile threat in Hawaii. Recently on January 14, 2018, a false alarm was triggered in Hawaii telling citizens to seek shelter as there was a ballistic missile inbound. It was followed by, this is not a drill. This caused mass panic and calamity. The Hawaiian government layer reassured people that this threat was false and that they could carry on with their day. This was caused by a worker at the Hawaii National Emergency Management Agency who released a false threat when they changed shifts from one person to another and it was caused by pressing the wrong button. The error was not corrected for a full 38 minutes, after which an emergency clarification was sent indicating that it was in fact a mistake. President Donald Trump was golfing at the time of this emergency and had no comment. Hawaiian Senator Brian Schatz apologized for the error on Twitter. This has been Logan and Jordan with some national news. Thank you. This is Jay and Antonio with some follow-up news on a Florida serial killer. On Wednesday, November 29, 2017, the Tampa police arrested Howell Manuel Donaldson III. Donaldson was a former St. John's University basketball player. He was taken into custody at a local McDonald's where he was a crew leader. Donaldson was wearing his McDonald's uniform when he pulled into a local McDonald's and asked a manager to hold his handgun while he went to do something else. The manager approached a police officer at McDonald's and told them about the handgun and that Donaldson mentioned leaving the state. <coughs> the officer called for backup and took him into custody. Tampa Mayor Bob Buckhorn was proud of the city for dealing with Hurricane Irma and 51 days of dealing with the serial killer. He supports the death penalty for Donaldson if found guilty. Donaldson was charged with four counts of first-degree murder and was held without bond at Hillsburg County Jail. This investigation was the largest police effort in this county since 2010. This was Antonio and Jay with follow-up news. Thank you for watching. This is Rick with some moderately local news. On January 14, 2018, a New Jersey man left his girlfriend to die in an icy river in the city of Burlington, New Jersey, which is between Trenton and Philadelphia, after a crash that occurred just a few minutes before. 24-year-old Jacob Garrett was driving by the Delaware River and speeding and crashed into a parked minivan on the side of the road while he and his girlfriend were in the car. It flipped over on its side and landed right in the icy river. Jacob managed to get out of the vehicle in time, but unfortunately his girlfriend, Stephanie White, was trapped in the passenger seat and wasn't able to escape because she was still wearing a seatbelt. Firefighters pulled her out and took her to Lord's Medical Center where she was later pronounced dead. Jacob Garrett was arrested and charged with leaving the scene of a fatal accident causing death while driving with a suspended license and endangering an injured victim. He was being held Monday in the Burlington County Jail, and he is scheduled to appear in Superior Court in Mount Holly, New Jersey. Well, this is all for now from Rick with some local news. Hello, everyone. This is Philip, George, and Damian with a report on the recent Cavs versus Warriors game on Monday, January 15th. The 36-9 Warriors faced the 26-17 and 17 Cavs, with the Warriors ending up with a win over the Cavs with a score of 118 to 108. In the first quarter, it was 35-37 to 37 with the Cavs taking the lead. In the second quarter, the score was 57-64 to 64 with the Cavs still ahead. In the third quarter, the score was 93-91 to 91 with the Warriors taking the lead. The final score was 118-108 to 108 with the Warriors for the win. All-Stars Kevin Durant and LeBron James are dealing each other this game. Many of the highlights included KD's three-pointers, LeBron's blocks, and both of them dunking a lot. All in all, this was a great game by both teams, with the mostly expected outcome of the Warriors taking the W in the end. That's all for sports. Until next time, stay classy, Southern Cuga. Hello, my name is Hunter. And my name is Tyler. And we're here to bring you some interesting news on numbers. Not just any numbers, but prime numbers. A FedEx employee has discovered the, the, the currently largest known prime number, consisting of over 23.2 million digits. Making this prime number nearly a million digits longer than the previous record. For those who do not remember what a prime number is, here's a refresher. Prime number is a number that can only be divided by itself or by one to get a whole number as a result. The founder, John Pace, is a FedEx employee in Tennessee. At his church, he built a, all their desktops and handled their computer network administration. He had several computers run on a free program from Mercine.org, which, which is part of a project called GIMPS. GIMPS stands for Great Internet Mercine Prime Search. 
Mersenne numbers are prime numbers that are found using the, a particular formula. The formula is 2p minus 1, or in this case, p would be a prime number. This formula was created by Marin Mersenne, who was a French monk in the 17th century. It took 14 years for the computers to find the right prime number for the formula to find its 23.2 million digit number. Then it took six days for a computer to calculate this result. Two was multiplied by itself nearly 80 million times, then subtracted one from the result to get the prime number. John Pace is going to be rewarded 3,000 for his find. This is the only the 50th Mersenne number discovered, and its discovery rate is less than one per year. The person who finds a prime number with over 100 million digits will be set to receive $150,000. This number and other prime numbers are important for encryption. Encryption is used to protect valuable digital information. But this number, at the moment, is too large for use in encryption. Well, this has been Tyler. And Hunter with your news on numbers. Hello, my name is Brittany and I'm here with the TV segment. segment. Today I'll be talking about the TV show called Vampire Diaries, which is similar to most vampire shows in today's media. Vampire Diaries is set in a small town at high school where a vampire named Devin comes home after centuries of being, being elsewhere, where he finds a doppelganger to one of his ex-vampire lovers named Catherine, who he thought was deceased, and then his vampire brother shows up and wreaks havoc on the small town of Mystic Falls, and that's forcing him to show Elena his true self. Although there is many more adventures than just the beginning of the story, it all came to an end when the finale came out and the fandom was torn between emotions and sadness and happiness. Because not only did they defeat the bad guy, they lost someone dear to the main plot. I would recommend this show because it's a good show to watch over time so you can be able to soak up all the riveting details it has to offer. I'm Brittany and that's all from the TV segment and good night. That's all for this week. Thank you for watching the Southern Cougar Show.